All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started with the keynote. Thanks for everyone for watching through our introduction. Um, so I want to start my keynote with an update at Sealed Rust. So uh, reminder for anyone who missed the first couple minutes, I'm James Munns from Ferris Systems. Um, and Ferris Systems is a consultancy that's been working on um, improving the state of Rust in industry, particularly in this case for the embedded systems industry. So I wanted to give an update on Sealed Rust, which is our initiative to bring Rust into more mission and safety critical areas. Um, as I mentioned, Sealed Rust is Fair Systems' effort to qualify the Rust programming language for people who are working on using Rust in either mission critical or safety critical software development areas. Um, so last year, just after Oxidize, we announced our intention to work on Sealed Rust. It actually came out of a lot of the discussions that happened in person at uh, Oxidize last year. So we were able to meet with a lot of people who were interested or already looking at using Rust across safety critical industries and in higher levels of criticality for their business. Um, so since we put out that initial blog post about a year ago, uh, we spent the last year talking to a lot of companies in industry. So we we've, we've spoke with people who are engineering people at these individual companies, companies who are technology leads or CTOs at these companies, or people who are interested in making Rust a part of their offering. We have spent this last year really refining the technical plan. What would it take to bring Rust into these industries, whether it's a mission critical industry uh, or a safety critical industry? So we've been working on making sure that we have the right technical offerings and what we would need to do to help Rust enter those markets. We've also been working on our business plan. How can we make sure that we have the right people and the right funding to bring all of these efforts to completion? Um, we see there being a fair amount of work to do, and that's something that we didn't want to push on open source contributors. We see this as being rightly done by uh, companies with funding and paid for by the companies that would benefit for this, because it's something that is useful to a lot of people, but generally the most useful to niche industries like mission critical services and safety critical services. So what we saw as the important parts that differ from what's offered from Rust, the programming language today, is to formalize a subset of the Rust programming language. So we think that it's important for these industries to make sure that there's a part of the Rust programming language that has very specific semantics in terms of what the language offers and what that means in practice, either at compile time or runtime so that people can make these stronger guarantees on what their programs will do and what their programs won't do. We also think it's important to come up with a stabilized version of the compiler output. So this is important for two main reasons. So we see people using Rust and wanting to be able to analyze what their programs are doing. And for this, it means that they need to have an input to their programs that they can use to make assumptions and do analysis on this. So they need some kind of stabilized output from the compiler that allows them to build these reliable analysis tools to make stronger guarantees on what their programs are going to be doing. We also need a stabilized compiler output for different compiler backends. Over the past year or so, Rust has been growing their second compiler backend. So historically, LLVM was the only general way that you could compile Rust using the Rust front end and generate machine code or operational code or applications from that. And over the last year, we've grown support for a second backend, CraneLift. There's been a lot of work that's gone into that to make sure Rust has the ability to offer stable output for both CraneLift and LLVM. And it's really been paying off. And we're looking at expanding that support to invite more and more compiler backends, ones that are relevant to either mission critical applications or safety critical applications. Um, into the fold. It also means, especially for safety critical, a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of documentation and verification that needs to go into making a safety critical compiler offering. And that's a lot of work that really is different from the kind of work that you typically do for an open source project. So we want to make sure that we have the ability to do all of that paperwork, to submit these to the kind of organizations that are going to be doing the validation of tools like the Rust programming language for safety critical applications, including automotive, industrial, avionics, medical, all of these kind of things and the different regulatory bodies that go with them. 
So I've been mentioning the phrases mission critical and safety critical a lot. We've been generally, from talking to a lot of these users that want to use Rust in new areas, we found that they've generally fallen into one of two categories. The first, which we call mission critical, are the kinds of people who are building uh, services for their business that have a lot of money and business uh, reliability constraints riding on it. These are people who are providing cybersecurity systems, large-scale infrastructure, uh, highly reliable systems that are built using Rust. We found a lot of these companies have already started using Rust in one way or another, but as users of the Rust programming language, they want the highest level of confidence available for their tools. In particular, the mission critical folks want to have the most insight possible for analyzing what it means to have a correct Rust program. This goes back to that stable output that I mentioned where they're either building tools in house to do some kind of formal analysis or they're looking to purchase third-party tools that do this kind of analysis for them. Um, these are industries that don't necessarily have a regulator telling them what they can and can't use, but as a business, they wanna make sure they're minimizing risk as much as makes sense. As I mentioned, these are our infrastructure provided people who are providing hosting for millions of people or routing and network infrastructure for millions or even billions of people. Um, and we want to make sure that these mission critical users, users are just as well supported. Safety critical was the use case that we originally had in mind for sealed rust. And we realized that there's a lot of interlink in here, but there's a little bit of slight difference between mission critical and safety critical users. We found that over the past years, there's a lot of safety critical users, people building embedded systems that have to do with keeping people safe. Uh, and they've actually already in many cases already been doing the analysis to see whether that Rust could provide some kind of benefit to their business. Uh, most of these people that we've talked to have come away with a positive look at Rust as a potential tool for safety critical application. However, they need tools that are suitable for a slightly different product cycle. People in safety critical often offer their tools and applications for 10 to 20 year product cycles, which means they really need to have a lot of confidence in their tools. They also do have a regulator typically constraining what they can use and making sure that they're only using tools that are suitable for the application. These are the folks like automotive, medical, industrial, avionics, railway, all of these industries that keep people safe, both their users and the people who are working with and alongside their uh, software applications. So we really see sealed rust being a, a step forward for the industry, both from a technical and a developer concern perspective. So for the folks that are in the room, you're probably already familiar what kind of things Rust offers you. But from a technical perspective, we really see Rust being a language that offers best in class safety features while still giving you compile time control of your performance and resources. We see this being a huge uh, benefit for these mission and safety critical industries because they can use one programming language, whether they're developing secure server application, constrained embedded systems, or even mobile devices and application. At the end of the day, from a technical perspective, we really think Rust and sealed Rust can help deliver maintainable, reliable systems. Doesn't matter how good your technical solution is, though, if your developers don't really like using it. We've seen a lot of stronger or safer tools out there in industry today, but none that are quite as well loved as Rust as a programming language. Over the last five years or so, we've seen Rust be a language that's been publicly spoken about as a language that's been loved by developers as well as engineering organizations. Um, for the last five years in a row now, Rust has been Stack Overflow's most loved language, and almost every big household technology name has spoken publicly or a little privately about their use of Rust, including Google, Apple, Mozilla, Facebook, Dropbox, Microsoft, Intel. The list is really only growing, and it's been really great to see the industry uptake of Rust, everywhere from server-side systems to beginning to be now um, embedded applications as well. Um, we really think Rust is a modern language that can bring new improvements. It can be a language that improves productivity as well as improving safety and security. So I really want to point out one of these in particular that uh, I mentioned here that 70% of Microsoft's security vulnerabilities 2004 to present were due to memory safety. And this is a number we keep seeing over and over and over again. Chrome has released a study that showed that 70% or so of their um, 
defects were due to memory safety. And there's been an analysis of Apple's uh, CVEs from some of their uh, OSX releases that really reiterates that 70% number. So this is a number that we're really not going to see change because despite all the best practices from some of these best in class engineering organizations, these kind of problems really keep happening. So it's time to really step back and address these fundamentally using a language like Rust. Um, from a sealed Rust perspective, we, we hope to be offering people in the safety critical industry pre-qualified compiler and pre-qualification packages so they can use Rust off the shelf in their safety critical applications. We plan to do this by integrating with existing qualified compiler tool chains um, and rather than introduce a brand new off the shelf tool for them, just add Rust as a supported language in their existing development pipeline. For both our mission critical and safety critical folks, we hope to bring tooling and analysis capabilities, either the ability to roll your own if you need to in your industry or to provide them off the shelf from Ferris Systems so that you can have a greater level of understanding and reliability in your applications. We also hope to provide long-term support and training for anyone who's integrating Rust into their offerings to make sure that you have a version of the compiler that works with your system over the long term, as well as making sure that your developers and integrators know how to use Rust in your applications. We've been working over the last year on establishing partnerships with qualified compiler vendors, particularly for the safety critical application to make sure, as I said, that you're not introducing a wholly brand new tool into your organization, but instead you can begin using Rust with your existing qualified compiler uh, vendors. We've partnered with Green Hill Software to be our first uh, person that we're moving forward to investigate what it will take to get a qualified compiler ready for applications like ASIL-B in the automotive industry, and even looking at higher levels of criticality and in other industries. We're also talking with even more qualified compiler vendors and hope over the next months and years to be able to support more and more qualified compilation tool chains to make sure that you really can use Rust in the way that you're already developing safety critical software today. Um, we're also looking at establishing our first partnerships with customers, some of them particularly in the automotive industry we're already talking with, um, and we hope to be able to talk about that publicly here in the future. Um, but we're looking to establish these first partnership with customers to make sure that the first version of sealed rust, whether that's mission critical sealed rust or safety critical sealed rust, is ready to go on day one. So we see this milestones being over between now and the end of the year, establishing these partners partnerships with either um, compiler companies, potential customers, silicon vendors, and anyone building tools that has to do with around Rust. Um, we're looking to be establishing those partnerships between the end of uh, this year, between now and the end of next year. Um, then we're really hoping to kick off the technical uh, focus between then and about 18 months till we can offer our first version of mission critical sealed rust around the middle of 2022. And then hoping to have our first safety critical qualified version of sealed rust safety critical by the end of the year 2023. So if you're interested in using rust sometime in these milestones, definitely make sure that you reach out to us. If you're interested in sealed rust and we've already been talking to you, definitely uh, make sure you keep talking to us and let us know what you're interested in. But if you're if you haven't talked to us yet and you're interested in being an early customer or an early partner in Sealed Rust, make sure you send us an email at sealedrust at ferrisystems.com. That's sealed rust at ferrisystems.com. And we'll get in touch with you and make sure you're in the loop with all of these uh, developments as they go. So now enjoy the conference. Make sure you uh, keep an eye on both the chat and the stream. And we're gonna go to break now before we start our first talk. So thank you all very much for being here and being a part of Oxidize Global. <laughs>